whoa, 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 out of the first pack. Yo -sha. What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and I'm back for another Shrip'em story time. <gasps> Did you hear that? I breathe. I'm going to do this now on my Wednesday videos. I'm going to breathe because it's way more sustainable for me to make these videos. And you guys happen to really like it. I love interacting with you all in the comments. Thank you for commenting on my video and telling me that you enjoyed the story because I have a lot of fun telling stories. So I think I'm just going to do this. I'm going to just shrip them and tell weird stories about what's happened in the strange adventures of Joku. So we're here for another week. And you know what would be really, really cool? Well, you don't have to. You don't have to subscribe. But if you did, it would be really, really cool. Now, I, you know, everybody in the Joe crew, thank you for, for subscribing and checking it out. I think I know who a lot of my fans are because you guys actually comment and let me know what you think about the videos. I love the feedback. I love doing this stuff. But here we go for another week of Joku's Shrip'em Adventures. All right, so rewind to Japan 2014, right? I'm this young Joku wearing crazy stuff. You know, you think the stuff I wear now is wild? I looked like a maniac back then. I wore literally wore like shiny shorts and tie-dyed leggings and like fur hats and fur vests. I looked totally, totally mad. Um, oh, we got bless him. Let's do a bless him here. Bless him, the shrip him of romance dons. Thank you so much. So uh, every day when I was in Tokyo, I'd go out and I would buy pastries because the pastries there are so good. They taste so completely awesome. So I would go out and get pastries. And um, I was going out to get pastries one morning. Whoa, 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 out of the first pack. What a shrip -em story. That means we're getting an alt art in this box. Yeah, that means we are definitely getting an alt art in this box. That's very, 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 this is very exciting stuff. King, King. I think this is such an awesome looking alt art also. And this is like story about kings. So this is great for perfect story time. Anyway, all right, so I'm in Tokyo, right? And I'm going out and getting some pastries. I'm in Asakusa in Tokyo. And I wanted to go find some pastries. So I go out to look for some pastries. And I see this huge guy sitting on the corner of the street and he's just staring at me. He looks like he's going to kick my ass. Like he, it does not, people in Japan don't stare at you like this, right? Like they may glance at you, they may look at you, but people don't just stare. This guy was straight up staring at me and I thought he was going to knock my lights out. Like I seriously thought he was going to take me out, right? So I was like, I got to avoid this dude. I got to go in every direction I can to avoid this guy. So I went, I was walking in one direction, couldn't find a pastry shop, walked in another direction, couldn't find a pastry shop. I walked in every direction to avoid going behind this guy. And finally, I'm like, all right, I got to go behind this dude. So I'm kind of trying to like sneak behind him, right? And as I'm sort of like sneaking behind him, he turns around and he's like, oh, bro, where are you from? And I was like, uh, New Jersey. And he's like, dude, he's like, where'd you get those clothes, man? Those are crazy. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I made them. And he was like, man, he's like, I love colors. Check out my hair. He takes off his hat. His hair is like bright orange. He's like, you got to make me some clothes, man. I love these colors. And I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> okay. Like, do you know where I can get some pastries? He's like, yeah, get in this cab with me. So I was like, okay. So I get in a cab with this guy. And when we're in the cab, he's like, hey, you know who I am? And I was like, no. He was like, next time you, he's like, here's my card. Next time we're in Tokyo, we'll go do some sumo stuff. And I was like, okay. <laughs> And I got out of the cab and I looked this guy's name up on the business card that he gave me. And I was like, what? Who in the world did I just get in the car with? So this guy, his name's Konishiki Yasukichi. I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but he was the first non-Japanese sumo wrestler to win the sumo championship. And he held Ozeki, which is the, the second highest rank. Yokozuna is the highest rank, but you have to be voted into it. And there's a whole thing about him and being into, voted into Yokozuna that never happened. And... Japan and racism and all this stuff. You can look it up. Look it up on Wikipedia and, and, and learn about it. Oh, yeah, this card is so good. Okiku is so, so good. Oh, Luffy Dome. Um, yeah, so anyway, we went to sumo practice. I ended up linking up with him. Um, and this dude is literally like a legend. Like when I was walking outside with him, everybody was bowing to him. I didn't know what was going on. We ended up becoming friends. And um, this was the first time actually in 2014, this was the first time that I saw Dragon Ball Heroes cards. Huta! Uh, I saw Dragon Ball Heroes cards and I was playing Dragon Ball Heroes in Japan and I collected like an insane amount of Dragon Ball Heroes cards. And in my first year of dental school, I took those Dragon Ball Heroes cards and I uh, put them on t-shirts. So I was making t-shirts with Dragon Ball Heroes arts and I was putting pictures of them on Facebook and uh, Kony saw, Konishiki goes by Kony, that's his nickname. 
um, he saw these shirts and he was like, dude, I love your shirts, man. Like I want to get some for my big 52nd birthday. And I didn't realize the importance of the number 52 to him. So I just thought it was another birthday, but I was like, sure. Like how many do you want? And he was like, all of them, five extra large. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I make him these t-shirts and the next thing I know, Kinemon, the next thing I know, I'm seeing pictures of this dude in Japan. And the only thing he's wearing are my t-shirts, literally only Dragon Ball shirts. And this guy doesn't even like Dragon Ball. It's not his thing. So I was just like, whoa, this is crazy. This guy is literally only wearing my shirts, right? So fast forward a couple more years, I take a trip to Japan with some of my friends. And I made us all matching outfits out of uh, Dragon Ball fabric that I use. I actually took a picture from Dokken. Um, and I, I tessellated it and turned it into a pattern. I made us all, all pants and shirts out of it. I called it Japants. So I made Kony some Japants also, and we went to go get a uh, sushi dinner with him. And as we were getting uh, sushi, you know, it was this meal that was like totally insane. I've literally, I've never had a sushi meal like this. It was like the most extravagant, elaborate sushi meal. It was totally, totally wild. And after the sushi meal, you know, the check comes and I'm like, dude, let me, let me chip in some of this. I mean, I cannot afford this meal. This meal is insanely expensive, but let me at least pay for something. These are my friends that like, you've never, you've never met before. And you're just being so nice to that me and them. And like, please let me contribute something. And he was like, nah, bro, like this is how it's going to go. He's like, when I got old, you're going to take care of me. And I was like, yeah, absolutely, dude. I would love to It'd be my dream come true. So we had dinner, he took us out this awesome sushi meal. And the next time I'm going to Japan, right, I'm getting ready to go get uh, for my trip. And I tell him I'm coming out there and he's like, bro, I need some new shirts. And I was like, all right, dude, I got you. So, oh, croco boy, doshita croco boy. So I tell him that I'm gonna make him some t-shirts and I end up, uh, I, look at this, Luffy's mom, definitely Luffy's mom, for sure Luffy's mom. So I make him 15 more t-shirts and I take them out there. And uh, he picks me up at the train station and you know, we say hi to each other. I give him the shirts and he's like, he's like, bro, how much do you want me to give you for these shirts? And I was like, dude, you're not gonna pay me for these shirts. This is the deal. From now on, when I come to Japan, I'm gonna bring you an out outfits of clothing and you're gonna take me out to eat dinner every night. He was like, deal. So that was kind of the deal. Basically, I go to Japan. Now I bring a bunch of clothes for my big bro. And then he takes me out to eat every night. And it's a completely awesome relationship. So that's the story of how I met Konishiki. Oh, and also the uh, importance of 52. So in Japanese, go is five and two is ni. So goni, goni is 52. That's why it's his lucky number. And he actually has started his own clothing brand. Um, you know, after having become friends, he was like, dude, I didn't realize like, <laughs> here's a sumo wrestler. He's like, I didn't realize and Otama beautiful cards. How nice Drake. This card's really good. Also, he's like, I didn't realize I could just make clothes for myself. Like it didn't really occur to me until you came along and started making me clothes. So he actually started his own clothing brand. It's called sumo brand 52. He makes completely awesome stuff. It's like food, uh, ink, like the Japanese ink style paintings with sumo wrestlers playing different sports. So like sumo wrestlers surfing or sumo wrestlers golfing or sumo wrestlers doing like other sports, but it's clearly sumo wrestlers doing it. And they're really cool. The designs are really cool. They're either all black and white or all, you know, vice versa. And very, very clean, very cool designs. I'm super impressed with what he's making. So it's been really cool to make that friend. And I have another really crazy story actually about uh, a, 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 a pirate endeavor getting him t-shirts. I want to pull these SRs out of here. I've gotten two so far. So there should be one more SR and that's a great SR to pull, kid. And then that's like, gonna be it from these packs. We pulled the Croco Boy and King. Uh, I think that croc is pretty cool. Where is this SR? Oh, Drake, that's a great card. Um, yeah, so um, I do have a pirate story about getting 300 t-shirts to Hawaii and seeing them all on a bunch of very large human beings at a memorial service, which I'll have to tell you guys about on another weekly uh, Joku's, Joku's Pirate Adventures, Joku's Story Corner. Maybe it's in the Bless Him, Bless Him, Strip Him. We should have one more SR in this box. So we pulled two SRs and we got the Luffy Dawn and we got, nope, it's not in here. All right, what do you think? What do you think? SR in here? Is it gonna be? <gasps> Yatta! Zoro! Zoro Juro! That was pretty cool. Wow, that was really nice. So that's the strip em. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. Konishiki is an amazing human being. The guy is like literally one of the most epic and inspiring human beings I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. And I'm so lucky to call him my big bro. Um, if you guys go check out his socials, I'll drop some of his links in here. You can check it out. The guy's hilarious. He's 
honestly one of the most greatest inspirations I could ever imagine in my life. I am a dentist. I can't end without doing a dental tooth tip. So my dental tooth tip to you would be if you have metal fillings in your mouth or metal crowns, you should avoid eating really hot and really cold stuff in sequence because the metal has a different coefficient of thermal expansion and contraction than your tooth structure, which means that it expands and contracts at a different rate than your tooth relative to temperatures. So that vast change in temperatures can either cause the tooth to crack from the expansion of the filling inside or create a gap between the crown margin and the tooth structure over time. This isn't the stuff that happens like in a day or two days, but avoiding those drastic temperature changes and you know easing into temperature changes if you do have metal work in your mouth, it helps those metal restorations stay in your teeth in a more healthy way. But I would recommend getting those replaced with ceramic or composite if you have the ability and time to do so. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time. I can't edit that out because that's, that's what this is. This is Rod Joku live for story time. Thank you so much. He's like, he's like puffing up his cheeks to blow air, but he doesn't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> At all. Knowing <laughs> 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 <